I'm Mikey and this is VimFu number two. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to edit a little bit more efficiently in Vim. Now this is aimed at pretty much complete beginners. If you're not already comfortable with kind of moving around and navigating, I would recommend checking out my first video on moving around like a pro in this card above. Once you're a bit more comfortable with moving around, come back to this video. I'm gonna be building on top of the concepts that I introduced in that first one. Here is how to perform more efficient edits in Vim. Even if you're relatively new to Vim, you'll probably know that in order to change a file, you actually need to explicitly enter what's called insert mode. And you can do that by pressing the lowercase i when you first open the editor. Now this drops you into a mode that allows you to type things into a file. At this point, Vim will act pretty similarly to most other text editors. Now simply using I in conjunction with the moves I discussed in my previous video, you can pretty much perform most edits, but it's not as efficient as it could be. In practice, I very rarely use I to go into insert mode. The only time I ever use I to enter insert mode is when I want to prepend into a very specific location in my file. Otherwise, I'll tend to just use change. I'm going to cover that in a little bit more detail in a second. So in my previous video, I covered what nouns and kind of movements are. For example, word, W, takes your cursor forward by one word, and B, back, takes your cursor backwards one word. Today I want to introduce another concept, which is verbs. So for example, one that you probably already know is insert. Insert is a verb that tells Vim that you would like to insert text before a character. Here is a list of some verbs that a more intermediate Vim user uses on a daily basis. For example, change, delete, append, and replace. Some of these verbs are standalone in that they don't require any more key presses in order to complete the action. However, some of these require combining with a noun or movement. I'll go a little bit more into the details in a second. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at these standalone verbs uh, these are going to be very simple and I can explain them quickly and then we can move on to the more interesting stuff. Firstly, we have append, which is a lowercase a when you first open Vim. It's basically the same as insert lowercase i, except the cursor is placed after the current character as opposed to before it. Delete a single character, lowercase x. x is a very useful fine-grained verb that you would use to delete a specific character without having to enter insert mode. If you didn't know about X, what you might do is enter insert mode with I and then move the cursor, press backspace and then exit insert mode. X does all that for you in a single key press. Replace a single character, which is a lowercase r. Now this technically isn't a fully standalone verb because it requires you to provide it with the character that you would like to replace the current one with. For example, if I put my cursor over this letter and I type R0, it will replace the character with a zero. Once you press R, Vim waits for your second character before it completes the action. Two other useful verbs I use quite regularly, uppercase append and uppercase insert. So instead of using a lowercase a, you can use a capital A and that will append to the end of the line. So it will take your cursor to the end of the line and put you into insert mode. Similarly, an uppercase I will put your cursor at the beginning of the line and put you into insert mode. Another command that I use quite regularly is insert new line. With the lowercase o, you can insert a new line into Vim and enter insert mode. With capital O, it inserts the new line above the current line as opposed to below it. Now these verbs are pretty simple to use, so I'm not going to spend much more time looking into them. Instead, I'm going to spend the rest of the video talking about these kind of more special verbs that require combining with a noun or movement. Firstly, let's look at the delete verb. Now you might be thinking, well, we already know X, which is a raised character. What's the difference between D and X? Well, D allows you to provide a noun or movement to tell them exactly what you would like to delete. And this is what makes it very powerful. So if you just press D by itself, nothing happens. Vim waits for you to tell it what you would like to delete. Now at this point, I can specify many different nouns or movements. Let's start off with some examples. DW stands for delete word. And in my previous Vim video, I demonstrated that by pressing W, it just takes a cursor to the start of the next word. In the case of DW, we're deleting everything from the current 
cursor position up to the start of the next word. So once you've become more comfortable with the movements and nouns that I covered in my previous video, you can now prefix them with D to perform a much more efficient deletion. Let's have a look at another combination. We already know that by pressing T open bracket, I can move my cursor up to the next open bracket. By pressing DT open bracket, Vim will delete everything up to it. But what if I want to perform an action on an entire line? Typically, this is accomplished by pressing the verb key twice in a row. For example, if I press D twice, it will delete the current line. So the next verb I want to talk about is change. By using the C key instead of D, Vim will not only delete your selection, but it'll also put you into insert mode. For example, if I want to change this word here into something else, I can simply type CE, E takes me to the end of the current word, followed by the word that I would like to replace it with. Similarly to deletion, you can replace an entire line using two presses of C. So seeing that D and C are very similar, you might be thinking, uh, why do I even need to use C? I could simply just delete my selection and then press I to go into insert mode. However, doing a deletion and then an insertion is a bad idea. The reason why you want to use change instead of delete followed by an insert is that you can accomplish your action in a single command. By accomplishing something in a single command, this enables you to leverage FIM's really powerful repetition mechanism to greatly improve the efficiency of your edits in the long run. So I feel like this is a good time to introduce the period key, or the full stop, if you will. For example, now that I've changed this word using CE followed by my replacement word, I can exit insert mode, and then move my cursor to another word and press period. This replays my last command and replaces the new word with the same word that I just typed. Now that we've covered the symbol combination of a verb and a noun or a movement, let's have a look at prepositions. Now this is something that I discovered uh, way too late. It's a little bit embarrassing to be honest, so hopefully uh, you won't make the same mistake as me and you'll get comfortable with these sooner rather than later. So what I mean by preposition? I want to talk about inside and around. We know that if we want to replace a word with another, we can move our cursor to the start of the word and then press CE. But there's another way to achieve this. This other way is to use a preposition. For example, inside or I. Now when I is typed on its own, Vim goes into insert mode. However, if you type C followed by I, it leads to a different behavior. Say my cursor is currently in the middle of a word. If I type CE or CW, Vim will simply delete everything from my cursor until the end of the word before dropping me into insert mode. However, if I type CIW or change inside word, the entire word will be removed. This produces the same result as pressing B followed by CW, but it accomplishes the operation in a single command. And as I just covered, that's better. As you can see, if I press BCE, Vim treats the edit as two commands. So when I try to repeat that in the middle of another word, it doesn't fully replace it. Inside is very powerful. You can use it to edit anything that lies inside any scope. For example, CI double quote will replace everything inside the current set of double quotes. So for example, if you're inside a string and you want to replace what's inside that string, you can simply type CI uh, double quotes or single quotes depending on whatever language you're using. CI open bracket will replace everything inside the current set of parentheses. Now you can do the same thing with XML or HTML tags by using T in this specific context. The key combination here is change inside tags, so C-I-T. So now that we've covered inside, let's have a look at around. Around is very similar to inside, but the object of the command is also removed. For example, C-A double quotes will not only replace everything inside the double quotes, but it'll also remove those quotes themselves. This might be useful if you want to replace a string argument of a function with a variable. Now on the topic of matching parentheses, Another useful command that I use is C percentage. Now the percentage key in this context matches up to the closing bracket of the current group. For example, say that I have a function call passed into another function as an argument. If I'm inside the outer set of brackets, I can tell Vim to edit up to the closing bracket of the outer set by using C percentage. If I try to accomplish this using CT open bracket, this doesn't quite behave as I expect because it just changes up to the first closing bracket that it sees. But by using C percentage, Vim can actually do the matching for you and say, oh, actually, 
this is the context that you're referring to and not this inner one, even though that's the first bracket that I see. And please note that this only works in this specific context. If I'm already inside a set of parentheses and I'd like to match the closing bracket, I would use CT close bracket instead. So there we have it, a very quick introduction on performing more efficient edits in Vim. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like the kind of content I'm covering here, then press that subscribe button with the bell icon and I'll let you know when the next video comes out. Thank you and see you next time.